Okay, when we left off at the end of the last video, we were talking about an example where we tried this new additive in a car. We found that it looked like it increased the fuel mileage a little bit, at least, in the cars that we tested. And we had to decide whether that was enough of a difference that we can say, hey, this fuel additive really does make a difference. It wasn't just due to chance. So, we have to decide whether or not to say, this makes a difference. If we say it does, we are rejecting the null hypothesis in favor of the alternative hypothesis. And we might be wrong about that, in which case we're making a type 1 error, which is rejecting the null hypothesis, saying there is a difference when there really is, a, is not a difference in general, and the difference that we saw in our sample is just due to sampling error, random variation among individuals, that sort of thing. And if we do not reject the null hypothesis, we say we can't be sure that this makes a difference. That wasn't enough of a difference to rule out the null hypothesis. It might just be due to random chance variation. If we say that, and we are wrong about that, that it really does make a difference, then we're making a type 2 error. So that's where you don't reject the null hypothesis when you should have rejected it because it's false. So rejecting something that's true is an error, and not rejecting something that's false is an error. Rejecting the null hypothesis when it's true is a type 1 error. That's where you say there is a difference, but really there isn't. And not rejecting the null hypothesis when it's false is a type 2 error. That's saying, we can't be sure there's a difference. We can't rule out that it's just random chance. But there really is a difference. And notice it's worded in terms of reject or do not reject. So that's a little like in a criminal trial where the jury has to decide guilty or not guilty? Is there enough evidence to prove that this person is guilty of the crime he's accused of? Or is there not enough evidence? If there's not enough evidence to convict him, that doesn't mean that they're sure he's innocent. They just mean, it just means that they're not sure beyond a reasonable doubt that he's guilty. So if they say, this person is guilty, and this person really isn't guilty, that's one kind of error. If they say, we're not sure this person is guilty, there's not enough evidence, but he really is guilty, that's a different kind of error. So those are kind of corresponding to the type 1 and type 2 errors we're talking about here. You're either rejecting the null hypothesis, we're saying there is enough evidence to say there's a difference, or you're not rejecting the null hypothesis. You're saying there's not enough evidence to say there's a difference. There might be one, we just don't have enough evidence to prove it. So how do we make that decision? How do we decide whether or not to reject the null hypothesis? Well, it's based on the question of how likely is it that we would get a result like the one we got if the null hypothesis were true? If it's not very likely, then we reject the null hypothesis. That means that the alternative hypothesis is probably true. There probably really is a difference. If it's somewhat likely, then we don't reject the null hypothesis. We're not saying we're sure the null hypothesis is true. We're just saying we can't rule it out. So we don't have enough evidence to say that there's a difference. And there are two different methods that could be used to actually base this decision on. There's the traditional method, and there's the p-value method. The way the traditional method works is you calculate a certain test value, you look at where that test value is in relation to either the standard normal curve or some other curve, and if it's in the so-called critical region, 
then you reject the null hypothesis. The book talks a lot about how that works, but I'm not gonna talk much about that. That's not used as much anymore. Nowadays, it's more common to use what's called the p-value method. So that's what I'm gonna focus on, the p-value method. You come up with something called a p-value, and if it's small enough, you reject the null hypothesis. So going back to some of the examples we were talking about earlier, the chocolate chip cookie example, the null hypothesis would be that the average number of chips per cookie is 16. Our sample had a mean of 15.2. If we were doing this by the traditional method, we would calculate a test statistic that measures how much different 15.2 is from 16. How much of a difference did we see from our sample mean and what the null hypothesis claimed the population mean was? So if that test statistic goes beyond a certain critical value, we reject the null hypothesis. We rule out the claim that the average for all the cookies is 16. The p-value method, the way that works is we calculate what's called a p-value that measures the probability, that's why it's called a p-value, p is p in probability, of getting a sample mean that's as different from 16 as the one we got. So if that p-value is small enough, then we reject the null hypothesis. So I mentioned earlier that there were one-tailed tests and two-tailed tests, and one-tailed tests are either left-tailed or right-tailed. So anytime you do one of these hypothesis tests, it's either going to be a left-tailed test or a right-tailed test or a two-tailed test. And what makes the difference is what your alternative hypothesis is, depending on what kind of a difference you're interested in. So if the alternative hypothesis is that mu, the average or mean of something, is less than some particular number, that's when you're doing a left-tailed test. And then the p-value would represent the probability that you get a number at least as low as the one you actually got in your test if the null hypothesis were true. If your alternative hypothesis is that mu is greater than some particular number, then you're doing what's called a right-tailed test. And if your, your alternative hypothesis is that mu is just not equal to some particular number, then you're doing a two-tailed test. So the null hypothesis always has an equal sign. For now, it's always going to be that mu equals some particular number. But later on, we'll look at other kinds of testing situations where you're testing other kinds of claims. But always the null hypothesis is going to have an equal sign in it somewhere. And then the alternative hypothesis is not going to have an equal sign. Instead, it's going to have either a less than or a greater than or a does not equal sign. And which one of those it has is what determines what kind of test you're doing, left-tailed, right-tailed, or two-tailed. In our example situation of testing the girls and boys at the video game, the null hypothesis was that girls and boys are equally good. There is no difference in the general populations of girls and boys at how good they are at the video game. So remember, a type 1 error would be rejecting the null hypothesis when it's true. So here that would mean saying, oh, there is a difference between how good girls are and how good boys are, when really there isn't a difference. And a type 2 error is not rejecting the null hypothesis when you should have rejected it, because it's false. So in this situation, a type 2 error would be when you say, oh, we can't rule out that 
the null hypothesis that they're equally good, but really they're not equally good. There is a difference. Now, suppose we run a test and we get a p-value of 0 0.035. The p-value turns out to be that number, 0 0.035. What that would mean is that if the null hypothesis is true, there's a 0 0.035 probability, if you like percents better, that means a 3.5% chance of seeing as much of a difference as what we actually saw in our sample. Is that enough of a difference to reject the null hypothesis? Well, we never know for sure. So we kind of have to make a judgment call. Is that enough of a difference or not? And the kind of threshold, how big it has to be before we reject the null hypothesis, we call that the level of significance of the test. The symbol for that looks like this. It's the Greek letter alpha, which sort of looks like an A, and it is the Greek version of our letter A, and it represents the maximum probability of committing a type one error. And it's kind of up to us to choose what level of significance we're working with, but the most common choices are either 0.05, or 0.01, and that would correspond to either a 95% chance or a 99% chance of making the correct decision if you actually decide to reject the null hypothesis. So that's kind of like saying, how sure do you have to be that this guy committed the crime that he's accused of before you send him to jail? How good does the evidence have to be? So. This is like, how good does the evidence have to be before you say, yeah, there's really something going on here. This drug really does make a difference, or this fuel additive really does inc increase gas mileage, or there really is a difference between girls and boys at how good they are at this video game. So at first, in the first examples we're gonna be doing, we're gonna be assuming the following, that we are testing a claim about mu, about what the population mean or average of something is. We're going to assume that we're dealing with a variable that follows a normal distribution. And we're going to assume at first that the population standard deviation of that variable is known. We do have a number for sigma, the population standard deviation. And then later on, we'll see variations on this. So the steps that we go through, it's a five-step process to actually work through hypothesis testing. Step one, state the hypotheses and identify the claim. So you're clear about what it is you're testing. Step two, compute the test value. Step three, find the p-value. Step four, make the decision to reject or not reject the null hypothesis. And then step five, summarize the results. So I'm going to come back in part three of this video and talk a little more about how these steps actually work. See you then.